This is Kay Progeny. I wanted to tell y'all a story about a race. And this race is metaphoric. And there are two guys. There are two different roads to take. But both roads have roads that veer off. That make the... That are shortcuts during the race. But God tells them to take the straight path. But the shortcuts will get them there faster, to the end faster. So both guys head out. One guy is sprinting. There's hills. There's gullies. There's rivers. There's even rivers filled with, with alligators and sharks, and they have to make a raft or a boat to get across. It's a, it's a tough terrain. But if they veer off to the left, it'll take them around the curve straight with no hills, no gullies, and no dangerous situations. So one man, he goes and he climbs the mountain. He gets to the top and he looks up and he sees the other guy way up there. And he's like, man, that guy is fast. I got to hurry up. So he starts to work harder. The other guy just keeps going. And then every time he gets to a difficult point, he'll take the shortcut. So the other guy gets to the end real fast. And when he gets there, there's a gigantic wall. He can't cross the finish line. His shortcut took him to a dead end. The other guy who transversed the course like he was supposed to, he gets to the end. He gets the big reward. He's the winner. The other guy fails and never makes it to the end. And he is stuck there at the wall. We know that when God created the heavens, he also created the hell. And the angel said, and this is Coming from an Islamic perspective, surely anyone who sees the paradise will want to go. And anyone who sees the hellfire won't want to go there. It says that the one who gets the least in paradise will swear he got the best. And the one who gets the least punishment in the hellfire will swear he got the worst. At the end of this race, there's a consequence or a reward. You have to be mindful of that. And you can't cross the finish line without the judge okay in your crossing. And al Hakam is the most just judge. That is God. And there will be nothing left out of your record. Not a thought, not an action, not nothing you did in private, under the covers, under the cover of darkness, everything will be presented. How will you fare then? Will you look like the good sport or the bad sport? Will you be terrified at the time of death or will you be happy and elated that you have done a good job? It ain't all about relationships. There's a bigger picture that we're not focused on that is allowing people to end their lives in trauma and in bad ways. And the only way to fix it is to give them the right way. Stop talking about, well, we, we have to address the problem, but we can't make the problem all that we talk about. We have to talk about the solution. And the solution is returning to trying to obey God's laws. They are there as a safeguard. I'm going to repeat this over and over again. Look at what disobeying God's laws does to people. Just check it out. One day I'm going I'm to sit down and go through all of them. And, show, and, and try to show you as many things that happen when you disobey God's laws that punish you. And it's not God punishing you. It's you punishing you by not obeying what you're supposed to obey. If I tell you that this slicer will cut off your hand if you stick your hand under it and you stick your hand under it, whose fault is it? You were warned and you still did it. So it says that when people are in the hellfire, they will call out to the gatekeeper of the hellfire and they will say, go to our Lord and ask him to relieve us for just a moment. And the keeper of the hellfire will say, did not someone warn you during your life about this? And they will say, yes. And he will say, you will have no relief. Your punishment will be continuous and it will have no breaks. Y'all do what's good. I holler.